Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Roadmaster Diode Wiring Kit on a 2022 Jeep Cherokee. Now this is available in a bunch of different options based on your needs. So if your tow bar doesn't have an umbilical, you can actually pick it up with a coiled cable or a straight cable. Also, you can pick up the wiring bundle without any connectors or some of them actually have the four pole on the front. It's kind of up to you what you want to choose. Now there's five main components that are required when flat towing a vehicle. And the first one we'll start off with is the base plate and that's gonna actually attach to the vehicle uh, via the bumper mounts or the chassis. And it's gonna be a secure mount for us to be able to attach our tow bar. And the tow bar is gonna be the second component and that's gonna make the connection point between your base plate and the actual towing of the RV. Moving along, we have our safety chains here, and that is, with this one, it's integrated into our tow bar, but this just goes to the safety chain loops on the RV, just in case of an accidental disconnect, it's gonna hold that vehicle on there. Now you have your diode wiring as well on your six pole, and that's going to mimic the light signals from the RV, so when you're stopping, braking, or using your turn signals, it's going to actually let the people behind you know what's going on. Now, another thing too is going to be your supplemental braking system. And what that's gonna do is send the signal to the vehicle when you're slowing down and bringing the vehicle to a slow or stop. And also, if the vehicle was to disconnect, it actually has this breakaway cable, which when you pull this, will apply the brakes on the vehicle. That way it's not rolling down the highway. One of the components that you may need to pick up is gonna be a high-low adapter. And what that does is actually make sure that the tow bar is close to level as possible. Now you wanna be within a three inch height difference between the towed vehicle and the RV. So the best way is just measure from the center of your hitch pin hole here to the center where our pins are on the base plate. And it should be within a three inch range or less. Now, if it's bigger than that, you will need a high-low adapter. And we have plenty of options here available at eTrailer. Make sure that it's a perfect fit for your combo. Now something else we've added on this vehicle, which is kind of up to you, but a nice feature is gonna be a charge line. And that's just gonna tie into your six pole and pull 12 volt power from the actual RV. And it has a circuit breaker, which allows your towed vehicle's battery to be charged. Because many times when you flat tow your vehicle, it has to be in an accessory mode. So it's still using electricity. And a lot of times if you've done a long journey, and your alternator's not working, so your battery will be dead when you get to the campsite. Well, the charge line eliminates that, and is a quick, easy way to make sure that you're not charging up your vehicle because it's dead at the campsite. Now, what the diodes actually do is tie into the factory wiring on your brake light and turn signals, and what it's gonna do is just mimic what the RV is doing. So many times you've seen vehicles towed, they have magnetic lights that you actually have to run up to the RV, or sometimes you can actually get the wireless lights and that's great, but that's one more thing you have to remember to put on your vehicle and hope that they stay on. Whereas the diodes, once they're tied in, you're ready to go pretty much anytime you plug up. So if, it's, if you flat tow your vehicle often, this is a great option. It's one less thing you have to worry about. And as you can see, we're getting all the same signals as our RV. Now you can see what we have here is our six pole and that actually was not included with our kit, nor was the umbilical. This actually came with the tow bar. So if you're choosing a tow bar that doesn't include that, you can actually pick up the diode wiring with whatever umbilical you may want, whether it be a coiled or even a straight cable. Now the tow bar that our customer has chosen actually came with the umbilical as well as the six pole to make that connection point. But if your tow bar doesn't come with the umbilical or that plug, you can actually pick up a combo kit that's gonna include that. You can pick from straight cables, coil cables, and also you can pick your wiring with no ends or even your four pole. The installation of diode wiring is not terribly hard to do. You're simply making the attachment point here, and depending on your braking system, you may have to tie into that wiring, and you just run it back to your taillights, where you're gonna be splicing in with some spade connectors. It's not too terrible to do, and we're actually gonna take a look at that installation right now. Now, you might notice that our fascia is off, and that's because we just put our base plate on, and honestly, if you are doing di diode wiring, more than likely you are gonna be doing your base plate along with it. So it's a good time to actually have the fascia off to be able to run those wires. That way you're not having to snake it through the front fascia. Now, speaking of that, I 
can actually show you the route that I took. And really all I did here is I took my wiring and I just attached it to where our six pole connector and breakaway switch are mounted on this nice bracket. From there, I just started kind of running our wires back and uh, we'll just kind of trace these. So with this braking system in particular, you actually have to splice into these wires. Not all braking systems are like that. Uh, but it is something you want to check and a lot of times what I'll end up doing is just running a little bit of extra. Um, I kind of just routed it up and I kind of just pulled a loop here. In fact, here's all those connections that I made into our braking system wiring and you can see I've spliced into these. So having this little extra loop when I pulled it up made it nice and easy to actually make the connections here rather than having a tight spot underneath the vehicle or in a spot that's hard to get to. So it's kind of up to you, depends on your braking system. As we have here, the stay and play duo, that one does actually require splicing into it. So from there, I kind of just routed it around this fuse panel and then kind of down underneath the booster here. And I can actually show you that. I'm gonna raise the vehicle up and we'll get a better view for it. Now you can see that I actually ran the wires down um, and right now I have it kind of draping still. I'm going to go back and zip tie that up, but really I'm just trying to avoid any pinch points or any points that could get hot on the wire. And so we actually have our steering rack here. There's also this sway bar. So trying to keep it up against the actual frame is kind of my goal. And following a lot of the factory wires and brackets really helps with that. So you'll see as I kind of move along here, I kind of fed it underneath this skid plate. And then you get to the point where you have your hard lines for your brakes. And I really just tried to follow this. Now, normally there is a skid plate here, so you may have to remove that. It's just a couple 10 millimeter bolts. And I think there's a 15 somewhere in there. And that's just gonna make it a lot easier. Now you're gonna see right here, I actually have my white wire to a ground. Now you can actually split that white wire back and ground it kind of wherever you want. If you can find a factory ground, that's up to you. But kind of peeling that wire back, separating it from the other three wires, it's gonna be really nice because you're gonna be able to save quite a bit of length of wire. And you'll see when we get back to the diodes why that's important. So continuing on though, let me just kind of move along here, kind of use this bracket for the fuel tank and routed it up over the rear cross member and then just kind of made sure to avoid the exhaust. And now I have my extra wire hanging here. Now that wire that was our ground wire, this is the extra that I was able to salvage. And that's gonna be really nice because we will have to jump between our two taillights. So peeling that off, that's gonna leave us with three wires. So we have our yellow, that'll be our left turn signal. So that'll be for the driver's side. Our brown is actually gonna be just the running lights themselves or the taillights. Um, so that's gonna actually need to be jumped. That's where our white wire will tie into. And then the green is gonna be our right turn signal. So I'm gonna leave this kind of uh, hanging down for now. We're gonna start on the driver's side. And really we need to just remove this and get these wires fed up before we can make any of those connections. So I'm gonna go ahead with a T30. Looks like there's just two of them there. We'll go ahead, get these loosened up and removed. And then pulling the actual tail light out, sometimes they can be a little bit tricky, uh, but just kind of a quick wobble like that allows this to pop out. Sometimes they can hang up on these clips. So if that's the case, you can actually use like a plastic trim panel tool to kind of pry it. But you can see this reveals our plug and this is what we want to separate as we're gonna tie into this. So to remove that, you just pull that red clip out. That's the locking feature, push down and it should separate. So we'll set our tail lights in here just to keep them safe. So now you're gonna see this kind of black fabric tape and we're gonna to need to peel this back to gain access to our wires. So if you can find a loose end and start peeling, that's gonna be really helpful. Um, but sometimes they, it can be kind of tricky. So using a razor knife um, or just a small razor blade and just kind of working along here can also help. But this one seems to be working in our favor here. We'll keep peeling and see if we can reveal all those wires. The main thing too, when you're, if you do have to cut this back, just take your time, make sure you're only cutting this. You don't wanna splice a wire and then cause some electrical issues down the road. So we'll peel this back. So I've gotten that tape off and that's just gonna allow us to kind of separate the wires and determine where we need to splice into. So a lot of times what I've found is with the diodes, if you put them too close to the plug, it makes it really tricky to fit this back in. Um, so I try to do my best to actually go back here. That way they can kind of tuck in. So we need to determine which wires we'll be splicing into. And there's, well, two ways to do that. Really you can take a 
um, light tester here and run through the turn signals and the running lights and that's going to denote where your wires are but I've actually gone ahead and saved you that so the other option here is to just trust me on my wiring uh, you can check for yourself if you'd like but this is going to be the wires that we need so your white with the yellow it's mostly yellow but you have a white stripe here this is going to be your tail light wire now the other one that we're going to be looking for is the solid white and this is going to be our stop and turn so let's go ahead we'll separate these that way we know which ones we need to tie into so now at this point we need to get those wires up and i'm also going to be passing our extra ground wire here because when we do tie into it this will have to go back down and over so it's just easier to run these all up at the same time and the way we're going to be doing that is the fish wire technique so i'm using spare air hose that we actually have at the shop if you don't have any air line at your house no problem just find something a string with a nut on it sometimes works but really something that you can feed this down attach it and then you can actually pull the wires up and that way you don't have to feed it up and because uh, it can catch on quite a few things as you do this so i'm going to find a nice hole to the gap back here i think i can fish this down and poke it out through the bottom so once you have your fish wire run down what we're going to do is take the yellow, brown, and our extra white wire here. I'm just gonna kinda tape this up. You kinda wanna tape that leading edge because um, as you fed it down, you might've noticed it is kinda tricky. Sometimes it gets hung up on things. So taping that up should help feed it up. So we have this tape. We'll go ahead and just kinda pull these up. So what I'm gonna do now is actually cut the two wires that we're gonna be tapping into. And you'll see on the actual diode, you have your spade connector. So you can go ahead and uh, we'll need four of them. And on one of the diodes on this side, there's gonna be this yellow and that's just gonna be larger gauge. And that's where we're gonna tie two wires into there. So make sure you keep that one separate. And your factory wires, really, they're just gonna kind of uh, pass through you're just making this quick connection here. So it's just gonna go through the diode and you're gonna see there's an in and an out. The out is gonna go towards the plug and the in is gonna face towards where that wiring is actually running. And this is also gonna be the side where we tie our new wires into. So we can go ahead and cut these and then we'll put spade connectors on both ends and then we can actually start tying in the new wiring. So I have all of my wires here spliced, or at least the two that we tied into. And now I'll just take my spade connector. And we'll just crimp this down. Now, anytime you make a wiring connection, I highly suggest just kind of giving it a quick tug. That way uh, you know for sure it's actually attached. It's not gonna come loose over time. So this one's pretty good here. We'll continue on just putting blue spade terminals here on the rest of our wires. Now, they're kind of thin, so if you want a little added uh, peace of mind here, you can actually bend the end, and that's gonna kind of make it a little bit thicker there and have a better bite going into the spade connector and just kind of hold a little bit better. So now I have these spade connectors and we'll just kind of make it a little bit easier here by attaching these. Now you can pick whatever diode, it's not gonna matter. And we'll just plug in the out again towards that plug. Should have a nice little snap there. And we'll just take that yellow and white and you can actually put it on either side. It does not actually matter. So whichever one you find um, your choice, you can go ahead and do that. So that's one diode. We'll do the next one here, same thing. We'll put this one on the out, and this one can go on either one again. So now that leaves us with two spots here that we need to tie into. So we need to actually figure out which wire goes to which. So our yellow being our turn signal wire, um, we have a lot of excess here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just trim some of this back. Um, since this is the turn signal, this is gonna go to our solid white, um, so we can, Go ahead, and this one can just be a normal blue spade connector because it's gonna be just for its side itself. It's just the left turn signal, whereas the brown is gonna be actually tying into the running lights on both sides. So let's get this yellow one done first. So 
So now we can actually make the attachment here. I'm just gonna run my wire a little bit cleaner here, but the yellow is going to tie into our solid white wire. Now, sometimes they can, they can actually get kind of tight here, as you can see, spade connectors are kind of, uh, you know, just kind of next to each other. It depends on the manufacturing process. Sometimes they're a little closer than others. Main thing you want to do is make sure that that uh, male end is actually going into the female end. Sometimes it's easy to go underneath it or in between it, but uh, you should have a nice solid feel once that's pushed in. So now we have one diode done. We just need to grab our brown wire here. And we're also gonna grab our white wire. So now I'm gonna strip back both of these and I'm gonna just twist them up. And now we can grab the yellow spade connector. And as you can see, it is a little bit larger than the blue. So that's gonna allow both those wires to fit. And then we can put this on the remaining spade connector here. And then at this point, what we need to do is actually kind of clean this up a bit. We want to make sure that these kind of stay together so they're not, you know, rub rubbing around inside as we're driving. So they actually have double-sided tape, so you can double stack these. And then what I actually do is put zip ties through them to kind of keep them all together. And it kind of just gives the wiring a fighting chance. Another thing you can do is actually take electrical tape and tape these together. That way one doesn't pop out if there's tension on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now I have everything kind of buttoned up. Again, I just use those electrical tape here just to kind of keep that all tight. That way it's not pulling one wire or the other. I just think it makes for a better connection or a less chance of this pulling out. And then zip tying these together again just to kind of hold them in place. So now we can go ahead, get this plugged back in, lock that down and get the tail light back in. Now you may need to actually kind of tuck this into the slot and sometimes, uh, especially like on the Cherokee here, you're going to see it's got a factory holding spot and those are really nice, but sometimes it can actually be pretty tight. So if you need to, you can actually pop this out, feed it down, and then you should have plenty of slack. So the main thing is making sure that these wires aren't going to be pinched tight, um, but you also have clearance to get your tail light in. So just take your time. You're going to slide those little pins in a quick push, and then we'll put our hardware back in. Now on our passenger side, we're going to be taking that jumper wire, that white one that we tied in with the brown, and that's gonna be going into our white and gray. So uh, the colors have changed once we went over to the passenger, so just make sure you're denoting that properly. So white with white and gray, and then our other one here, this is gonna be our stop and turn signal. So our green is gonna be the right turn signal, and it goes to the white and green. So it makes it kind of easy there. So now I'm just gonna kind of bundle it up all the same, and then uh, we'll get a tail light back in place before actually hooking it up at the front of the vehicle. Now, as far as getting our white and green wire over, I actually use the hitch. Now there is a heat shield here that you can actually take off, but I found that if I route this up, I could actually kind of reach it from this side um, in the center here by our factory seven pole. So I just continue that over and uh, really just kind of zip tying it in a few different spots to keep this from ever making contact with the exhaust and then just kind of routed this up. So again, yeah, a few zip ties here and there that should keep it secure. Now at this point, you may have to trim your fascia. So before putting it back on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't actually connect this yet because we're gonna to have to trim for this to fit. So it's gonna be a fairly large opening, but what I'm gonna do is actually mock this up, see where exactly we need to trim and make the least amount of cuts as possible, kind of giving that OEM look as much as we can. Now, depending on which kit you've picked up, you may have no ends, and that's gonna be just bare like the one that we're using. Our tow bar actually came with the six pole, so that's what we're gonna be connecting to. Now, if your wiring harness came with something different, whether it be a four pole, you may need to remove that to attach to your six pole, or you may need to pick up a six pole if your tow bar doesn't have one. But this is gonna make sure that we get our connection to our RV. So now I've kind of mocked this up and saw where our breakaway switch will be. So it's gonna be kind of this area here. And then we have our six pole, which is gonna be this area. So just kind of mocking it up with a paint marker, that's gonna allow you to actually see where we need to trim. And as far as cutting through this, the best way I've found is just a pair of little snips here. Um, it goes through the plastic pretty well and it's gonna be a straight line cut. We'll go back with the file to make sure it's you know pretty clean and there's no burrs, but 
This will go through it pretty quickly and at least get our baseline cuts done. So now we're getting ready to put our fascia up and what you're going to need to do is make sure that you actually get this plugged back in and also as we kind of go I'm going to feed um, I can actually take our breakaway switch here off but you're going to want to feed those wires through um, just kind of make it a little bit easier when we get it in place and just as we did while putting up or taking it off you're going to work the reverse order which is going to be from the center and then work your way out towards the actual fenders First, we'll get this in place here. Make sure you lock that back. And then just kind of lifting this up, we're gonna line it. And I'm gonna get these wires fed up here. And you should be able to get this to snap in here on the clips by the headlight. Now we're just going to go back and reattach all the fasteners that we took off in the reverse order when we remove the fascia. So now that we have our wiring here, um, you're going to see we have an extra one. This red wire is actually for a charge line and what that's going to do is while you're flat towing your vehicle, it's going to actually take a 12 volt power supply from the RV and transfer it to the battery through a circuit breaker and that's going to keep your vehicle's battery charged. So that's definitely something you want to look at when determining what you want to do for your flat tow setup. It's just kind of one of those easy ones to put in and that way you know that you're not going to have to stop and actually charge your vehicle once you get to your destination. Now that is going to be an additional purchase, um, but it's definitely something worth looking at um, while actually doing your research. Uh, you can add that to your card if you want to avoid having to charge your vehicle once you get to your campsite. So now we're going to attach this to our six pole and I'm just going to strip these back and I'm going to kind of even our wires up to our red one here. So I've gone ahead and stripped these all back and what I'm going to do is actually put our boot on first. Um, and this is just going to create a nice little seal on our plug once we have it in place. So we're going to go through the sequence and you're going to see this is what it looks like on the back side. And there's actually little letters that correspond to where the wires are going to go. So I'm going to start it off. We have our LT, that's going to be our left turn signal. We have an RT, which is going to be our right turn signal. And then we also have a ground as well as our tail marker lights. And then we also have an extra one here that we're not going to be using. This center one is going to be our 12 volt out, output. So that's going to be our charge line here. So that's where our 12 volt power supply goes through. To attach them using a small Phillips, you're going to want to just back these out and you're going to create that space to run the wire in. Now don't take them all the way out. Uh, they are very small and they're kind of tricky to get back in. So just backing it out enough to get your wires in place. Uh, something else you might want to do is actually put a little dielectric grease uh, it's just going to make for a little bit more of a protected contact. And if you need some dielectric grease, we actually have some available here at eTrailer. And again, it's just a little added protection. And that way you don't have to worry long term about maintaining your plug. So now we have our wires all actually attached. The main thing, you want to make sure that there's no loose ones making contact with the other metal poles as that can actually cause some shorting out. So. Uh, also, just make sure that you tighten it down, but you don't want to over crank it. You can actually damage those wires as well. So just make sure it's snug and kind of going through here just to kind of give you a check of yours. So tail marker light here, TM is going to be brown. Next, we have GD, which is going to be our ground. That's our white one there. Our LT is going to be our yellow for left turn. Our green is going to be RT for our right turn. And then we have our charge line in, there in the center, and that's going to be our 12 volt power supply. So I'm going to go through and uh, actually put a little dielectric grease throughout all this as well before putting our boot on. Now with the boot on, what I do is actually take some black electrical tape, and that's just going to kind of create a nice seal around all this. That way, you know, since this is on the front of your vehicle, any rain or um, precipitation that you might drive through, even just road grime is going to kind of build up on here. So creating a nice seal here is going to at least protect all our wires and the connections made. So once we kind of get to this, we can kind of just make it nice and tight here. So now what we'll do is take the self-tapping screws and we're going to just kind of push this in place here and you'll see that it's going to line up with these little holes and with the self-tapper, this is going to just tighten that in place. 
Now something you want to check to make sure is that you can actually lift this to get your plug in place and if you need to you can trim a little bit more but you want to make sure your clearance is good. Now we have our six pole attached and really all we need to do is hook up to the RV and actually test it out. So now I just need to go ahead and test to make sure that they're working. Now you can actually do this uh, hooking up to your RV. I'm using a test box here, but it's gonna be the same thing running through the same sequences. So now I'll start with my left turn signal, my right turn signal, my brake lights, and then finally my running lights. And that was a look and installation of the Roadmaster diode wiring on a 2022 Jeep Cherokee.